Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineeringtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will review our understanding of binomial distributions and binomial probability. But before we get into the meat of these concepts, we, would, we will take a quick run through of binomial experiments and some relevant notation. So a binomial experiment, a binomial A binomial experiment, also known as a Bernoulli trial, is an experiment in statistics that has the following properties. Number one, the experiment consists of n repeated trials. So the exper experiment consists of n repeated trials. Second, each trial can result in just two possible outcomes, success or failure. So the outcome can equal a success or failure. Number three, the probability of success, denoted by P, is the same on every trial. So the probability of success is always the same. And the trials are independent. That is, the outcome on one trial does not affect the outcome on other trials. So the trials are independent. So this is the rundown of binomial experiments. So let's consider the statistical experiment of flipping a quarter. Let's say you flip a quarter two times and count the number of times the quarter lands on tails. This is a binomial experiment because first the experiment consists of repeated trials. We flip a coin two times. Second, each trial can result in just two possible outcomes, heads or tails. Third, the probability of success for each trial is constant. It stays the same at 0.5 or 1 over 2. And the trials are independent. That is, getting tails on one trial does not affect whether we get tails on the other trials. So the following notation is important when talking about binomial probability. So the important notation is this. important notation x is the number of successes the number of successes that result from the binomial experiment n is the number of trials in the binomial experiment p is the probability of success on an individual trial. Q, which is also 1 minus P, is the probability of failure on an individual trial. So uh, PR big X, little x, is the binomial probability binomial probability the probability that the binomial experiment results in exactly x successes when the probability of success on an individual trial is p. And finally NCR, which is the number of combination of n things taken r at a time. So this is combinations. So let's get into binomial distribution. A 
A binomial random variable is the number of successes x of x in, in repeated trials of a binomial experiment. So the binomial random variable is the number of successes x in n trials. So this is x and it's the number of successes in n trials, in the number of trials. The probability distribution of a binomial random variable is called the, a binomial distribution. So let's look at a quick example here. Suppose we flip a quarter two times and count the number of tails, which we'll call a success. The binomial random variable is the number of tails, so x is the number of tails, which can take on the values of 0, 1, or 2, because it could either land on tails none of the time, one, of the, one time, or both times. So the binomial distribution is presented as this. So the number of tails and the probability is this. 0 is going to be 0.25. 1 is going to be 0.5. And 2 is going to be 0.25. So the binomial distribution has the following properties. The mean of the distribution is denoted big E x. So this is the mean. The variance is denoted big V x. And this is the variance. And the standard deviation is denoted as that. Now, now the mean of the binomial distribution is this, the number of trials times the probability, NP. The variance is NP1 minus P, and the standard deviation is simply the square root of NP1 minus P as it is in other instances, just the square root of the variance. So these are some ver these are some formulas that we need to remember when it comes to binomial distribution. So it's important to note that in a binomial distribution only two parameters, namely the number of trials and the probability are needed to determine the probability. So let's move on to talking about binomial probability. The, bi the binomial probability refers to the probability that a binomial experiment will result in exactly x, su x successes. For example, in the above table, or the uh, table on the previous page, we see that the binomial probability of getting exactly one till in two coin flips is 0.5. So we can compute the binomial probability based on the following binomial probability formula. P big X little x is equal to the combinations NCX P raised to the X times 1 minus P raised to the N minus X. So this is our formula for binomial probability and something we're going to want to remember. So let's look at a quick example. Say we are given that a die or dice is tossed five times and we are asked what the probability of getting exactly two fours will be. So we need to be quick to recognize that this is a binomial experiment in which the number of trials is equal to five so n is equal to five the number of successes is equal to 2 because we want to know 
what the probability of getting exactly two fours is. So x is going to equal two. And the probability of success on a single trial, p, is one six because there's only one four on a six-sided die. So the binomial probability is then just plugging this in, all this information into our equation here is 5c2 times 1 over 6 squared times 1 minus 1 over 6 5 minus 2. And that uh, plays out to be, just take this combination, expand it, 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 5 minus 2 factorial times 0.167 squared times 0.833 to the third. Just plugging that into our calculator, we see that the probability of getting exactly two fours after tossing a die five times is 0.161. So let's finish this off by talking about cumulative binomial probability. Cumulative binomial probability. Cumulative binomial probability refers to the probability that the binomial random variable falls within a specified range. For example, is greater than or equal to a stated lower limit and less than or equal to a stated upper limit. So let's say the probability of getting at most two tails in a three-quarter toss is an example of a cumulative binomial probability. It is equal to the probability of getting zero tails which is equal to 0.125. The probability of getting one tail, which is equal to 0.375, plus the probability of getting two tails, which is equal to 0.375. So the probability that we get at most two tails in a three-quarter tosses is equal to 0.8. 7, 5. And that's simply just adding up all the probabilities of the different scenarios. And we don't want to exceed, at, we want at most two tails. So let's look at a, an example of how we would go about uh, using uh, cumulative binomial probability. Let's say a survey from a lab found that 30% of college students receive their spending money from part-time jobs. So 30% of students receive money from part-time jobs. That's what the survey is telling us, 30%. So if five college students are selected at random, that's our random value, variable. If five college students are selected at random, find the probability that at least three of them will have part-time jobs. So to find the probability that at least three have part-time jobs, so that will be notated as at least three have part-time jobs, we need to find the individual probabilities for either three, four, or five and then add them together to get the total cumulative binomial probability. So once again, uh, let's just write out our, uh, our standard equation here is equal to n c sub x uh, p x 1 minus p n minus x. And we know that p is equal to 0.3, n is equal to 5, x is going to vary because we're going to uh, have a cumulative probability here and we want at least three so we need three four and five and so it looks like we have all of our information so let's just plug in let's first find the scenario that three of them 
have a part-time job and we find uh, just doing jumping ahead and doing the combination we got 3 factorial 5 minus 3 factorial 0.3 raised to 3 times 0.7 squared and that is equal to 0.132 so that's the probability that three of these five random students will have part-time jobs now the probability that four is five factorial four factorial five minus four factorial times 0.3 times four times 0.7 raised to the one and that is 0 0.028 and finally that all five have part-time jobs we'll just not write out this equation we find that it's going to be 0 0.002 so to get the cumulative probability that at least three of these students are going to have part-time job we just add up these three values and we find that it's equal to 0.162 that is the cumulative probability. So that's all I got for you guys. That's a quick review of binomial distribution and binomial probability. Hope it uh, helped a little bit. Um, if you guys have any questions, hop on over to engineerandtrainingexam.com. Shoot me an email, some feedback, some suggestions. Um, always open to whatever you guys want to bring to me. I'll try to help it the best way that I can. All right. So for now, you take care. All right. Bye. Thank you.